GarageBand on iOS and iPadOS is renowned for its intuitive and easy to use instruments, controls and options. Apple haven't made everything simple to find however, hiding away some of GarageBand's most useful features. In this video I'll share 5 hidden tricks and tips that'll help you get to grips with GarageBand on iPad and iPhone. You can add your own chords to GarageBand's Touch Instruments Chord View. This is great as you can add chord extensions and alternative bass notes here. Tap on the settings icon in the control bar, it's the cog shaped icon, and then tap edit chords. Tap on the chord strip you want to use for your custom chord. Then swipe on the chord wheels to set the root chord, chord quality and to add an added note if you want. Swipe the bass wheel if you want to add an alternative bass note. Hit done when you're finished and your edited chord strip will be ready to go. Now I'm no piano virtuoso, so I find this tip especially useful. You can add note labels to piano based touch instruments in GarageBand. You'll actually need to come out of the GarageBand app itself for this one. Open your iPad or iPhone settings, then scroll down to the big old list of apps at the bottom here. Locate GarageBand and tap on it to select it. Next, scroll down until you see this option keyboard note labels. Toggle the switch on and when you return to GarageBand all of the piano based touch instruments keys will be clearly marked so you know which notes are which. Somebody brought this up in the GarageBand users group on Facebook recently and I was quite surprised how many GarageBand users weren't aware that this feature existed. You can have any single drum in any of GarageBand's acoustic kits play a repeating pattern by holding down two fingers on it. If I hold two fingers down on this kick drum, you'll hear the pattern begin. By changing the distance between my fingers, I can adjust the speed of the repeats, making them faster or slower. Moving a finger up or down makes the repeats play back louder or softer. GarageBand's live loops make it quick and easy to get a great sounding groove going. But did you know that you can actually record into any given cell inside of a live loop grid? Either tap the cell you want to record into and select record into cell from the menu or just double tap your chosen cell. If a touch instrument is assigned to that particular row within the live loop grid, that touch instrument will open. If it's a real instrument that's assigned, the audio recorder will open. From here, just hit the record button and start playing the row's assigned touch instrument or play an external instrument or microphone through the audio recorder. Your edited cell will remain in place in your live loop grid and the whole thing will save as a new project when you hit the folder icon.
You can save your own edited electronic drum kits. If I open this electronic drum kit, you can hear all of the default sounds are present and correct. If I then edit these sounds using the drive, bit crush, low cut and high cut controls, There, that sounds about right. Once you're done, you can change the name of your affected kit by tapping the name of the current kit in the middle of the screen here and then tapping save. You'll be prompted to enter a name for your custom kit. When you're done, you can find your edited electronic drum kit in the custom category. So there you have it, that's five hidden tips to help you get the most from GarageBand on your iPad or iPhone. Did I miss anything? What tip would you like to share? I'd love for you to share your ideas and thoughts in the comments below. I've been Patrick from thegaragebandguide.com and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.